So what should you do if you don't want too much text on your slide, but you still want to show four topics in a timeline? Well, this is how Microsoft did it. And here we can see their CEO, Satya Nadella, talking about the four AI-driven business transformations. And as soon as he clicks, a line appears and an arrow shoots upward and connects the slide and gives some extra breathing room, which I think is a fantastic way to expand your slides, especially on a keynote or if you don't want to cram too much information into it. So let's jump into PowerPoint and see how we can build this ourselves. We're starting from a blank slide and I'm going to change the layout to blank so we have a clean canvas to work with. The first thing we want to do is we want to add those bullet points to the slide. So for that, we're going to use shapes and add a circle. So a normal circle, we just hold the shift key to have a perfect circle. Let's remove the outline and we want to use that gradient fill. So I'm going to format shape, fill, and then I'm going to use that gradient, two stops with green on one side and blue on the other. Now, if you want to use this color palette from the Microsoft build setup, I'll put the color codes on the screen so you can just copy them in your presentation if you want to follow along. And then I'm going to make them a bit smaller and let's create three copies. So we have four in total, select them all, align, distribute horizontally and place them in the middle. Now there's also some icons in here and also some different gradients. So let's do this one from blue to purple and then we have from purple to that red and then here eventually we have the red to the orange so they're all nicely connected with the colors and i kind of like this color palette so it's a pretty cool way to to use a gradient in your slice i think now let's go to insert and icons to look for some icons in this case and we'll use the standard one so it's people i'll use this one I'll also go for conversation. There we go. Then we do gear. And the last one, it's a lamp for an idea. Light bulb. This one will do. So I'll add those to the slide. And I'm going to make it a white. Make it slightly smaller. And then just position them in the center of each of the blocks. Try to position it in the middle. And oops, there we go. There it is. There we have it. That already looks quite good. Now let's add some text to the slide. And that is, here it was, enrich employee experiences. I'm using the font Aptos since I think that is the font that they're using. It's a standard one on PowerPoint or the new version at least. So there's a good chance that they are using this one. And let's go for 16. Slightly smaller and center it. Create a copy, one more, and then just Type in the text, re-invent customer engagement, reshape business processes. And the last one, bend the curve to innovation. Now we also have a title at the top, and that is AI driven business transformation. Let's make this larger, quite large and bold. Center it in the middle of your slide so you can go to arrange, align, and line to center and center it in the middle. That's what we want for our first slide. Now, of course, we want to center it a bit more and give it nice breathing room. Let's see if we can go for a lighter version of that Optus font. So I'll go for maybe semi bold. I think that will look better on the slide. Also, for the background, I don't think they're using white, but a little bit of an off white. This is easier and a bit softer on the eyes. So that is the first part of the slide. Now the crucial part is going to be that align those arrows and the animation. There's two things that we can do. First is one where we use a shape and we use this elbow arrow connector and we just connect it to a different part like here. And then we just adjust the section and we could put that higher on the screen and just adjust the section. This of course gives us those sharp corners and we don't really want that. I don't think we have that smooth choice of the arrow. So you can do it like this, but if you want the exact effect, I think that's really smooth. I think they've done it in a different software, which is Figma. So I'm going to jump into Figma and show you how you do it. It's a free software, so you can just sign up and follow along. So let's jump into Figma and we're starting from a blank canvas here. Now I want to thank the P key for the pen tool and then just draw a line from the top, click, hold shift, click here, and now we're going to drag it to the side. So we have those three points. You can release the selection by pressing escape 
and then click on the V tool to have your selection again. Now we still have those spots, so if you press Ctrl or Command and grab one of these spots, you can drag it upwards to create that smooth angle. So let's do it like this, just a bit upwards. And then we repeat the same on the other one, press Ctrl or Command, and just drag this handle so we have that nice curvature that we want. Press V and deselect or escape and deselect everything. That's already pretty cool. We're going to create a copy, I'm going to position it here and just drag it until it meets this border. Now place them on top of each other and that already looks quite good. Let's see if we can create one more time, but just make it slightly smaller so it's about one fourth of the way. And then we repeat with this step. Let's do it like this in the middle, drag it to the side and then just flip it. This already is pretty close to what we want to achieve with that smooth corner and that smooth line. Now we want to have the tip, the arrow. So for that, I'm just going to go for a shape and do an arrow and then just drag it upwards and then press escape. Now I just nudge it a bit to the side so it perfectly matches and there's no overlap nowhere. So that's pretty good. You can always make it larger if you want. If you want to extend it, that is perfectly possible. Let's make it a bit smaller until it fits the slide. So this is about what we want to achieve for the arrow. Now for that, you can't export it from here. So I'm going to copy it, Control X, go to a new design file. And in here, I'm just going to paste it in. So we have this. You can still play around with the length if you want, if you want to have it a bit higher. And then once you have everything, select it, Control G to group it. And then I'll put this on full screen. You have the export button here. So you just click on export. You can make it once or twice the size, it doesn't matter. Make sure it's PNG for the transparent background and then export the entire group. You can save it as arrows in your download section and then save. Now we jump back into PowerPoint. And here in PowerPoint, we can just drag in the arrow key that we have created or the arrow image with PNG so we have no background and place it on top of the part that we have created for the circles. You might have to shift it just a little bit so it aligns. It also works, just make sure that these distances are equal so that everything nicely aligns. That's what we want to achieve. Send this to back. And now, of course, this doesn't have to appear. Now let's do the animations first. So for that, we're going to select the title since that one has to go away first. So go to animations and we're going to choose fade out. Let's open the animation pane and we have that fade out. Now, after the fade out, we want to have the arrows fade in or wipe in. So we're going to have an animation effect. And I think the wipe here from the bottom to the top. So if the selection isn't right, you can do it from bottom. Looks that it's appearing upwards, it's being drawn upwards. For the options and timing, we're going to set it to one second or maybe let's do two seconds. And it happens with previous. So let's already preview what we have here. So we have the opening slide and as soon as we click, it will fade away and the arrows will sort of flow upwards. That's already pretty nice. Now let's have a look at how we can create that second push effect or the morph effect. And for that, there's two ways, either push or morph. So I'm going to duplicate this slide. And for those who have the latest version of PowerPoint, you can just delete this, select everything. Maybe also delete the animation of the picture. We don't need that. Select everything and drag everything downwards. This I think is the smoothest way to do it. Then you have this bottom of the arrow. Just make sure that this one goes through straight one line. So we want to have that reflect as well. So it's only one arrow. That's pretty good. And then we have those two text boxes. So we're going to insert a rectangle, rounded rectangle, and position it right here. A right click format shape, gradient fill. And let's do a red and we're going for a gradient fill here. And then we want to change the colors to, what was it again? It was green to blue, purple, one stop in the middle, blue in the middle, and then green here. So this one, no outline. And then I had drive growth. Let's increase the font size by a bit and reduce the text box. Now we just duplicate this. And here we type in improve operating leverage and the colors here, we change it. The green goes away. This is blue. Oops. Blue goes to purple, 
goes to red. And then of course those two have to be animated as well. So we'll go to animations and let's do a float in. They come from the top. So I'm going to do float down animation. And this one can have a 0.3 second delay, the second one. I think that will look nice. And now we can just select the second slide morph. Now this doesn't have to happen on a click. So I'm going to do it with preview or after previous. So as soon as the slide transition is complete, this also happens. And now let's preview what we have. So we have the cool opening slide. As soon as we click, the title fades away and the lines converge. And then once we click, we move upwards and we have those two keywords dropping down. Now, if we look at them side by side, I think we have come to a pretty close result in mimicking what we can do in PowerPoint. Now, I think it's funny they're not only using PowerPoint, but some sort of other software to use that arrow with the rounded curvatures. Definitely something for them to improve upon. Now, if you want to save a lot of time and effort while making presentations, I also have a lot of templates available that you can download via the link in the description below, and they will save you a lot of time and effort while making your next presentation. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you want to learn more about PowerPoint, make sure to watch the video on the screen right now.